Welcome to this November 29th, 2020 online Sunday service for First Presbyterian Church in Penetanguishim. We welcome all of our brothers and sisters of our congregation as well as anyone who is visiting with us on our YouTube uh, online Sunday services. Uh, welcome to you. We are entering into the beginning, if you can believe it, uh, the, the first Sunday in Advent. And we know that the season of Advent is a season of waiting. Um, and after having already done so much waiting throughout this pandemic, uh, we're reminded today that we must continue to wait. The season of Advent, Advent invites us to remember that we do not wait in hopelessness and that we do not wait without purpose. We wait with the eternal hope, uh, eternal and sure hope that is found in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So as we gather our hearts to worship today across time and space, let us lift our voices, let us, let us lift our eyes, let us lift our hearts uh, to the hope of the world that is Jesus Christ as we gather together in this way. May the hope in and of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you richly this day. Let us join together for the call to worship and the lighting of the candle of hope. The season of Advent begins and we celebrate the hope we find in the good news of the gospel. Through the birth of a tiny and helpless child, God comes to save the world. While we watch and wait for Jesus, we join God's mission by bringing grace and mercy to those who need it most. We engage the poor and the poor in spirit. Let Christ's light shine through us. We speak words of comfort and love in a world in need of hope and healing as we share the stories of God's transforming spirit. Together we are a sign of God's hope for the world. Let us, Let us pray. pray. God of surprising grace, when we least expect it, you bring fresh new life. And where we feel that all is lost, you bring redemption. Give us courage as we share all you have done, all you are doing, and all you will accomplish through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you today asking that you would help us to put our trust in you, that we would not put our trust in our own understanding, in our own wisdom, 
But Heavenly Father, put our trust in you, for we know that you are good and that you are wise. We come before you bearing the weight of our sins, and we confess before you all the ways in which we have uh, turned our backs upon you. Renew us, O Lord, uh, and strengthen our faith today. Help us to turn our hearts back to you so that we may rest our hope on you and you alone. As, you, as your word is read today, we ask that you would uh, help us to hear what you have to say to each of us, that you would convict each of our hearts by your Holy Spirit. May the meditation of all of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing to you, O Lord, this day. As we give you thanks, as we give you praise, you, O holy, good, righteous, just, and loving God, to the praise of your name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading for us today is taken from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. And I am reading from the English Standard Version. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look. We are all your people. Our New Testament reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And our gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning the day or that hour, no one knows not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come 
in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the word of the Lord. Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. She was growing into a teenager and was living then in the obscure village of Nazareth in Galilee. She gathered the grain during the day and tended the lamp laid into the watches of the night. Her father knew the dedication of her work, her mother the kindness of her heart, her friends the curve of her smile. She stood on the threshold of womanhood. Among all the girls in the village, she had been noticed, chosen, betrothed, a child bride before whom lay only possibility. Her father could walk with pride in the city gates. Her mother could rest in the comfort of her daughter's future security. But then he came, unexpected, unannounced, spoke openly and without shame of pregnancy, virginity, and a son. Things men never discussed, and women only whispered about behind closed doors. She questioned him about the particulars, but not about the promise. She knew the prophecies, and the angel's words rang true. She would be scorned and rejected, labeled it an adulteress in whispers and glances. 
There would be no more carefree walks to the market, no more happy trips to the well. 400 years her people had waited for hope, but God had been silent. Now he had spoken. The wait was about to end. 40 weeks, and then Emmanuel, God with us. Over the course of many, many months, we have been looking at the red letters of Jesus Christ. And I thought as we came to the end of the Sermon of the Mount, it would be uh, appropriate this Advent season to take a little bit of a break from following um, strictly the the red-lettered words in the Gospel of Matthew, but spend some time looking at our lectionary readings um, and following the uh, the Advent readings uh, over the next few months or a few weeks. Um, So I would welcome you on this journey as we enter into Advent. It is hard to believe that we are already uh, almost in December and at the end of this this year. Um, We've had our share of snow and warmth and all manners of challenges and uh, just unique, interesting experiences over the past many months. Um, But may this period of time, may this Advent season be a very special and poignant one for each of us as we look towards the cross, as we look towards Jesus Christ, who is at the center of our faith. It was, of course, good to be away for a couple of weeks, and I thank you for allowing me to take that time off. Uh, I just want to share a special thank you to the Wasaga Beach Community Presbyterian Church and Reverend Barry Doner uh, for welcoming our congregation uh, to their online services. I hope it has been a blessing to you over the past couple of weeks. In the critically acclaimed musical Hamilton, there is a song called Wait For It. And it is a song sung by the character Aaron Burr, who must wait while his rival, Alexander Hamilton, seems to rise quickly in influence and power. It is one of the most well-known songs from the musical, uh, because, well, while I may not, well, I may know next to nothing about American history, I believe the picture the song paints for us is a very human experience that we can all resonate with. While many in this life will want to rise up to fame and fortune quickly, the, this song speaks of uh, the tension of wanting to gain power, influence, or wealth, or position, um, and Uh, the desire of wanting to get all this quickly, but also having to choose or sometimes being forced to to wait for it, to wait for the right opportunity, to, to wait for the right moment. In the song, one line reads, if there is a reason I'm still alive when so many have died, then I am willing to wait for it. This Kind, this is kind of the dream that uh, society and media has uh, often planted in, in many of us, that we are just a serendipitous meeting away from becoming someone, a, a celebrity or a YouTube star. We're just, you know, just one video shy from going viral or whatever it may be. I think many of us have had dreams, and maybe some of us continue to have dreams of being an overnight sensation one way or the other. And it speaks to the human experience of feeling that, that feeling like that there is always something more, that the best is yet to come, that the grass is greener on the other side, that the night is the darkest just before the dawn. There are all sorts of manners of, of mottos and sayings that, that talk about this experience. But the key to this human experience is that whatever it is that we are waiting for or expecting to happen, we must not be asleep, so to speak, but rather we must be ready and poised to to claim the opportunity when it comes. 
Eminem famously sang about, rapped about this in his song, Lose Yourself. Um, you know, talking about just this one moment that you either have the choice to let slip by or that you would capture it and, and, and take claim to it. And so with this same kind of mentality, Aaron Burr sings in defiance, I am not falling behind or running late. I am not standing still. I am lying in wait. Like a lion waiting to pounce upon its prey, waiting is made purposeful when you are awake to every opportunity that comes your way. In my conversations with people throughout this pandemic, it seems that one of the greatest lessons we are learning in faith is a lesson of patience. We are learning that we are not really in control of our lives. We have been learning that we cannot always do what we want to do. And it has been a humbling lesson for many of us. A lesson that has at the same time caused and continues to cause for many uh, a rise in fear and anxiety and exhaustion and grief. It has left many of us feeling um, alone and isolated, frustrated and bitter. And yet, in the midst of all this, there is very little we can do except wait. And learning to wait is one of the hardest, hardest lessons we can learn, is it not? Regardless of our age. Um, these days, all three of my boys have grown to be quite vocal about their, about their wants and needs. Uh, there was a time that when they cried or wanted something, it meant one of three things. It meant, I'm tired, I'm hungry, or I need a diaper change. But now it is consistently, day in and day out, dad this, dad that, could you do this, could you get me this, dad, dad, dad. Um, or, of course, mom, 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 when, when, it's mom, when mom's around. Um, and when you have three different voices asking for three different things while you're trying to do the one thing, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm always constantly having to tell them to, to wait your turn, be patient, you know, wait until I'm done this, you know, give me a second. And while I'm trying to teach them to be patient, uh, I turn around and yell at them to, um, when they're not, they aren't picking up their toys fast enough. And so, you know, I'm, I'm learning as well that patience, learning to wait well, seems to be a lifelong lesson. But we are always waiting, aren't we? We are waiting for some news by the phone. Uh, we are waiting to hear whether we got that job that we were hoping for. We are waiting for a package in the mail. We are waiting for the weather to war warm. We are waiting for the birth of a child. We are waiting for so much. Today, we, most of us are waiting for the COVID numbers to go down. We are waiting for a vaccine. We are waiting for a time when we might not need to worry about wearing masks anymore um, and hand sanitizing. We are waiting for a time when we can gather uh, again in church. We are waiting for a time when we can see our friends and families. We are waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And this is actually nothing new. For the scriptures have revealed to us uh, the reality of all creation that cries out in anguish over sin and of death. The reality that we have always been waiting for relief for peace, for an end to all suffering. We have been always waiting for the end of fear and death. We have always been waiting for redemption and salvation. And as we enter into this, this Advent season, brothers and sisters, may we be reminded today, perhaps more vitally than ever, that you, that we have always been waiting and we are called to be reminded of this truth. We are uh, reminded to be shaken from our sleepless slumber of coasting through life day by day as if this is all that life is about. We are called to be reminded that we have always been waiting because we have always uh, not a sense of or an inclining of or even an optimistic outlook of. We have always had a greater and most glorious hope. 
and that is Christ Jesus. From the moment that sin had entered into the heart of humanity um, and, and, and had entered into creation, God had never left us without a hope for redemption. Time and time again, his mercy and steadfast love, all written about through the pages of scripture, his grace had been revealed in how he, throughout history, stooped down to meet with us and to save us from evil, from sin, from death, from ourselves. And this is why we as people seem to never be satisfied when we have hoped for so long for for that job or home or car or degree and we finally got it. We are never satisfied because the yearning of our hearts have been clouded by our worldly desires and we have had our eyes closed to, to that which we are truly longing for. And then it is by the grace of God that we have found the reason for this yearning. It is by the grace of God that we have been awakened to the gospel, to the eternal hope we have in Emmanuel, in Christ with us. As we read today in Mark thirteen twenty four, it says, It begins by saying, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. You know, as if you read the scriptures, the scripture tells us of many things that will happen as we near the return of Christ. And while it is easy to get lost in, in how much of what we read is meant to be taken literally or what is symbolic, what are all of these numbers mean, we must really never lose sight of the most important point of it all. The point is, is that when there is tribulation, when the sun is darkened, and the moon gives no light. When the stars fall from the heavens and the powers in the heavens are shaken, when the mountains crumble and fall, when there is war and famine, when there is sickness and death, when there is oppression and injustice, Jesus says, then they will see the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming in clouds with great power and glory. As he says later, the the lesson of the fig tree is that there are signs that are pointing to none other than the return of Christ. And again, time and time again, we read throughout the Bible that in the midst of war, in the midst of oppression, in the midst of slavery, exiles, death, calamity, plagues, there is a Messiah, a Savior that is coming. That every moment of suffering, every grief and sorrow that we carry points to a time where they will be no more in Jesus' name. It is pointing to him. And we are called then to not be asleep to this reality. We are called then to not simply be dreaming of a better time. No, but by faith we are called to be awakened and waiting in hope. We are called to be anticipating in, with the hope that is found in Christ and in his return in how we live today. By faith, we look at all that the world is and, and, and to, to, to feel the sorrow and heartbreak that God has for this world so that we might, so that we must hope in the one and only one who is strong to save. And so it is in this living that our prayer becomes that the Lord would indeed come swiftly to to redeem and free us from this world. Praying, as we read in Isaiah, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, to free us from pain and sickness, from war and oppression, from our selfishness and greed, to let us finally enter into his embrace fully and completely, to see to completion the promise he made that he will return 
and that he will return soon. This is the hope that we have. As Paul writes to the church of Corinth, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And it is in, in this that we, we lay our hope. Not in our comforts, not in politicians or governments or countries, not in our wealth or even in our homes or, or, or our health, not even in our families and friends, not in the things of this world. We lay our hope in and only in Jesus Christ because it is only him and it is he who will sustain us to the very, very, very end. For no eye has seen and no ear has heard how great our God is, he who acts for those who wait for him. And so, brothers and sisters, let us be awakened to this hope, a hope that is echoed throughout the scriptures, the, throughout the gospels, throughout history, throughout all time and all creation. It is the hope that the Israelites carried for generations as they awaited a king, as we saw in the video. And it is the same hope that we carry onwards until his return. The season of Advent is not simply us uh, thinking about or hearing stories of how people waited for the Messiah to be born, but it reminds us that we and calls us to be in active waiting for his return again. Jesus says, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And therefore, so be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Therefore, stay awake, verse 35, therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come whether it is in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he, suddenly, he come suddenly and find you asleep. While the wor world, like the character of Aaron Burr in the musical Hamilton, may be waiting for luck or, um, or looking for a chance to, uh, to, or the opportunity that they, they believe will be the answer to all the woes of their hearts in this life, Jesus Christ warns us to be on guard, doing the work he has set out before us faithfully, diligently, joyfully, for we do not know when he will return. But then, until then, he says, and what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Let us awaken to the hope that pointed to the birth of Jesus Christ who was born to die so that we may live in his life. Let us awaken to the hope that Christ has not only come, that Christ has not only died, that Christ has not only risen, but that in this season of Advent, may we be the ones who are awake with the full and trustworthy knowledge and hope, not falling behind, not running late, not standing still, but lying in wait for Christ to come again. Amen. Let us pray.
You, O Lord Jesus, are the hope of this world. And so, in this season of Advent, as we are waiting for so many different things, may our greatest, may the greatest yearning of our hearts be brought to the forefront of our, of our minds and spirits, of our life, as we yearn for your return. For in all the suffering that we see in this world, for all of the, the violence and all of the oppression of throughout all of the hunger and sickness, O oh Lord, through all of the anger and bitterness and injustice, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would come soon. Come, Lord Jesus, come swiftly. But until you come again, grant us a faith that is grounded in the eternal hope that is in you. Forgive us for any ways in which we have lost hope, where we have lived hopelessly. But Heavenly Father, fill us with a confidence in your promise, for we know that you will return. And when you return and when you, or when you call us home, we will be united with you in all of eternity to enjoy your presence, your providence and grace, that we will be made new, we will be made perfect in Christ, redeemed and saved from all of our iniquities, shame, sin, and disobedience. For this we give you praise and for this we give you thanks. We are waiting for you. As we wait, Heavenly Father, take all the gifts that we bring before you. Breathe upon them and use it to build your kingdom, to lay the groundwork, Heavenly Father, for your return. For those of us who are unable to give, or for those of us who wish we could give more, receive our hearts as an act of praise and worship that is acceptable to you. Teach us to wait well, patiently, lying in wait for you, and strengthen us and embolden us uh, as you sustain us until the very, very end of the age through your Holy Spirit. We ask for your blessing upon our congregation over all of our brothers and sisters, sisters who are alone, who are isolated, who are diligently serving others, for those who are ill or who are recovering, who are, who are awaiting surgery and treatments, O oh Lord, May you be with them to strengthen them. Grant us faith, Heavenly Father, always to be bold in you and to put our trust in you and you alone. We pray all these things as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Now may you go and grow in the knowledge of the grace of God, in the hope of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit that chases out all fear and sets us free into a life full and abundant, and go to fulfill the very purpose for which you were created, called, and sent. Amen. Peace.